Welcome back guys. Today we're going to go ahead and complete this task list here. Um, basically all I've got left is to create an RDS subnet for Jira, um, run Terraform show to see, show you exactly how the resources are, look like when they're created, uh, show you a few Terraform functions which I actually use some here which is element but I can show you exactly how, exactly how many functions there are and how you can use them in Terraform. Not all of them but you get the idea. And then hopefully we'll get to create the additional EC2 instances and the security groups on the RDS instance down here. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started with Terraform Shell. So let's go ahead and get show you that. <clears throat> so here I am with my uh, Terraform resources created. And if I run Terraform Shell, it'll show you every resource in full detail. So it's a lot of output. Also, this this also needs access to your AWS uh, infrastructure. If you don't have that set up properly, then this won't work. But anyways, you get the idea. So if you look at it, it's the resource is the AWS resource dot whatever you whatever your logical resource name is. So AWS dot tools public seven zero one tools private tools private seven zero two the subnet ID the IPv six address whatever it can be false tags and so on and if you can notice I actually didn't set any tags maybe I should have set some tags we'll go back and revisit that later um, but it's the same story with everything you have your private route tables your public route tables the VPC NAT gateways and so on if there were any EC2 instances right now in this particular uh, Terraform then you would see them here as well which we will be creating them all right with that said I'm gonna go ahead and check this off let me explain to you Terraform functions. So element is one of the it's one of the uh, uh, Terraform built-in functions that you can use. What it's doing is it's looking into this var tools private ciders. Now this must be a list for element to work. So if I look at my Terraform.tfvars, tools private ciders is indeed a list because it's represented by uh, square brackets and separated by a comma. Now some people like to do a comma separated string. I prefer full-on lists. So with a comma separated string, you also need to use a split method to make it into a list. So I saw that as redundant. Um, but regardless, with element, you specify the list variable list, or type, type list variable, and you specify the element ID that you want to specify. So in this case, zero, it would get the, it would get the, uh, the zeroth element from that particular variable, and then the first one from this one. Uh, from this particular same variable actually. So you get the idea. So if you want to take a look at additional Terraform functions, you can actually just Google that and it'll show you there's a large list of functions. And one of my favorites is obviously Element. Um, there are many others. So I occasionally use, I definitely use Split and Element and here's are all the built-in functions. I'll go ahead and put this in the description. Um, I've used Chomp, Cider Hosts, Compact, Concat, and there's element. There's a whole lot of file use, especially if you're using a provisioner. You may need to pass in PEM files or secrets somehow. You will need to use file uh, format to shorten like names or substitute certain characters. And join, obviously, if you have a split that doesn't require split, you need it to be joined. Or you know, just in case that output from somewhere else is different, you need to join them from uh, separate. You need to join the comma separated list. That would be it. Uh, anyway, there's a whole lot of huge functions around here. So um, whatever you're trying to do in Terraform, there's likely going to be a function that can help you out and make your life a little easier. Um, if you use them incorrectly, then they'll make your life very difficult. So be careful with that. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and put this in the description. So that explains Terraform functions. If we go back to our bear, we'll check that off. And we need to create an additional RDS subnet. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the uh, ciders for the RDS subnet. So I'm going to name this tools private RDS ciders. And this will be a list, of course, as well. I could have actually made this all into a map, so like public, like tools ciders, and then public ciders, and private ciders, and RDS ciders, but eh, to each his own. It's different data types. Um, so let's go ahead and do 10.0.4.0 slash 
four, and we'll do 10.0.5.0 slash 24. So I've got that list. And now here, I'll go ahead and create the subnet. So these are my private ones. I'll make them very similar to the private ones, meaning that they won't have map public IP on launch true. And they'll be, actually, that's probably just it. So resource, actually, let me go ahead and copy this. It'll be a little easier. And I named this, what exactly did I name it? I named it private RDS ciders. I forgot to instantiate the variable, so let's do that. So, uh, it's variable. Uh, type is equal to list. All right, we've got that. We've got this. And here it is private RDS subnet on one redundant name doesn't really matter to be honest um, this is o2 this will be tools private RDS subnets. Is it subnets that I named it? I named it ciders. I'm sorry, not subnets, ciders. And of course, this is zero and that is one. This is one A and that is one B. Again, these can all be like uh, more simplified into a for loop using count variables or sorry, count methods and and split them, splitting them up so you don't have as much resource declarations, but this is a more explicit terms. So I don't mind it at all. Anyway, so 1A, 1B, I've got my RDS, I've got the variable set, that'll go ahead and create that. Let's test it out. And hopefully we don't run into any problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a Terraform plan first. And let's see how it goes. All right, it's gonna go ahead and create two additional subnets, which is for my RDS. And I'll go ahead and do an apply. And it's gonna go ahead and automatically. Now that we've got our subnets created, um, the route tables automatically go through the local routes of the whole VPC, so it doesn't really matter about adding route tables. Um, so basically now our subnets our RDS instances will be able to live in the subnet and we should be able to continue on from there. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. In the next video, I'll go ahead and do the other resource creation about the EC2 instance. I'll see you guys there.